Today is going to be a bit of a technical vlog. I've been refactoring things and moving things around, so I wanted to discuss the changes I made from a software design and architecture point of view with you guys. So you can tell me in the comments how completely wrong I was, but that's the whole point. So let me try to share my screen with you and show you what I actually did. Alright, so for a bit of context, I've been working on this email client application and the main thing here is that you can organize your conversations in two folders. And so far, that's the only thing that I've been focusing on within my code base. So you can drag things around and organize them over here. But the issue was everything apart from that was extremely hard coded and messy. And that resulted in one mother of all commits that I made a couple of days ago, but I'm not gonna go through all of the lines, instead I created a couple of diagrams here to make it easier to discuss the changes. But first let me try to describe the problems I had with my original solution. So you can see in my original design the backend was actually handling most of the communication and most of the logic, but that meant I had to have a database. And even though I do like to believe I know how to secure a database, I'm not working full time on this and I have no desire to deal with any kind of data leaks. Because after all it's an email client and it makes it very valuable to hack, so I decided to basically nuke the database and get rid of it entirely. Now, my application is based on Electron, and so while I was there, I actually decided to make a controversial choice and move all of the business logic into the view layer, into the renderer process. And I want to explain that next. But first, a quick mention of today's sponsor, Ugreen, and one awesome change I made to my desk setup. It's actually a Thunderbolt 4 dock, and this one is called Revodoc Max by Ugreen. And even though it's a fairly compact device, it actually has 13 different ports. So let me walk you through. On the back side, most importantly, you have three Thunderbolt Thunderbolt 4 ports, one of them is upstream and two of them are downstream. You also have a display port, so when you're connecting external displays, you can connect one up to 8K at 30 frames a second to any of these three ports. And if you're connecting two displays at 4K 60, you can choose any two ports from here. In addition, on the back side, you have two USB-A ports and an Ethernet jack. Finally, this is where the power goes and this dock actually comes with a 180 watt charger. On the front, you have your TF and SD card slot as well as a 3.5 millimeter jack, you have a 20 watt USB-C port and two more USB-A ports. And this whole thing can sit either on the side or vertically because you have the rubberized pads. So let me actually show you what it looks like on my desk setup. Alright, so on my desk setup I actually have two external displays running at 4K60 in extended display mode on the Mac. And they are being connected via USB-C cables to the back of the dock. Now on the front of the dock I actually have my headphones charging via the 20 watt port, I have my SD card card plugged in and I have my USB-A port receiver for my mouse. And then everything is connected to the MacBook via the Thunderbolt 4 cable which is actually included in the box which is really nice. And I really like this setup because the USB-C cables that are running the monitors are allowing them to act as USB hubs which allows me a lot of flexibility when it comes to my connections. So if you have a setup similar to mine and you actually want to utilize the most out of your Thunderbolt 4 connections, I highly recommend that you check out the link in the description and with that we are back to coding. Every Electron app consists of two things, the main process and you also have the renderer. And so people traditionally put all of their business logic on the Electron main process. So in my case that would have been handling accounts, polling for messages from Gmail, managing all of the state, and then through the bridge they would pass the data to the renderer who just simply renders views. But I decided to actually move all of this over into the renderer. And so let me explain why. I actually had to move to another table, it's getting really crowded here. But anyway, back to the renderer. So the thing that I was looking at is actually cross-platform implementation of my app. And actually it turns out that both Android and iOS actively discourage doing anything in the background whatsoever, except for a few categories of apps such as like music players or similar things, you're not supposed to run anything on the process that is in the background. And so basically my Electron main process became really, really dumb. Or if I was trying to impress somebody I would say something like stateless. But anyhow, 
here's the new architecture. I still have the Electron main process, but it only has two functions. It will pass through any authentication credentials to the browser window, and the browser window is the one communicating with the Gmail API now. So all of the state and all of your private messages are in the browser window and they never leave that process, which makes it relatively secure. And then the other thing that the Electron main process does is simply save and load any file that the browser window thinks needs to be saved. So that includes all the messages, any configuration that the user chooses, and that makes 90% of my code base actually portable between platforms. And so finally, I actually want to do a little code review with you guys and show you some of the most important parts of the code, but first I'm gonna get going home. All right, let's do a little bit of code review. First, I'm gonna walk you through the components in the code, and then we're gonna look at some diagrams and explain the authentication and what all the components are actually doing. All right, so in the code, we have the local client, which is the Electron app, and inside the local client, we have the main process, which is split between the Electron app and the local server. And the local server is mainly used for authentication and creating the user accounts in the first place. And I'm gonna explain that a little bit later on the diagram. And then secondly, we have the renderer, and so here you can see that the first thing the renderer does is actually subscribe to the different events that we can receive from the Electron main process. We can receive the URLs of the servers, both the local server and the web server, depending on if we are running in production or locally. Then we have the system configuration, which for now is only used for the accent color of the UI. And then most importantly, we subscribe to any new accounts created because the user just logged in. But anyhow, the most interesting thing here is the way we load accounts and the user configuration and the messages. So when we open the load accounts function, you can see that we have a hard coded file name. And if I open up my data folder, you can see that there is a file called accounts. And this is the thing that I was explaining before, where the browser window is actually dictating what is getting saved into which file, whereas the main process doesn't really care or even know what's in the files. And if we actually go to the Electron app itself, you can see that handling the read file is simply reading the file and then decrypting it because we're using the safe storage module from Electron to encrypt and decrypt all of the data that is getting saved on the local file system because we don't want other apps or malware to be poking around our files because for instance, they actually do contain the user accounts. So if you can see, if I open here, there is nothing to see because it's encrypted. And then same goes for save file, which is simply writing the file and constructing the file path based on the name and some environment variable. And so basically I have three main files. I have the accounts, I also have the user configuration file, and I have the messages file. Now the messages file doesn't really contain all of the message data. It simply contains a list of these message info objects, which are kind of like short snippets of every message that we really need to display the UI because the UI here, these are the messages, these are the conversations constructed from these objects. They don't really need to have the message body or any attachments or anything like that. We just need to know who the message is from and for which account it is so that we can just list them here. So let me show you the diagram now. All right, so here's the diagram illustrating a simple flow for adding a new account. So let me actually reset the state of my application by simply deleting all of these files and we can see what happens when we refresh the browser window. So if I delete all of these files, this will practically clear the state because again, I don't need to restart the state of my Electron app because it doesn't really know or care what's in the files. So if I refresh this browser window right now, 
It will actually start from my onboarding page because there was no file to be read for accounts, configuration and messages. So here I will skip through my login process with my Google account because I want to preserve some of my privacy. But here you can see once I'm logged in, I want to show you what actually happened behind the scenes and how I was able to load my account information into the renderer process. So let's take a look at the diagram. So here it, everything starts from the browser window, which is the renderer process because it already knows the local server a URL because it actually receives it, it will take the user to the web server passing in the local server URL as one of the query params. The web server will take the query param, it will save it in local storage and then it will redirect the user to the Google authentication server. Now after that there is a classic OAuth flow that happens and then this success page will actually then load the local server URL that was saved in local storage and will make a cross origin request to our local server passing in the access token. Then the local server, actually I can show you right here in the code, the local server, once it receives the new account on the account endpoint, uh, let me just find it, it will send this new account to the event bus. And the Electron app is the only subscriber to the event bus. And when it receives a new account, it will actually invoke the on account function of the JavaScript bridge. And this is how we actually get the new account into the render process. So here what happens is I can select how many days and when I do that it will download all of the messages and you can see here that all of the new files for all of the messages have been created and we also created this one messages file that contains basically the index of everything that I have here. But you will notice that there is no configuration file saved anywhere here and this is because I haven't changed my configuration this is just the default messages list as they came in from Gmail. Now if I actually go ahead and and create a folder, then you will see that at some point we did create a configuration file because this configuration now contains one folder. And anytime I change my configuration by maybe adding a new folder or dragging things around, I will actually be saving this file periodically. And you can see it's encrypted, but this is pretty much the entire architecture of my app. And the way I envision this to work in the future is that all of your messages and accounts will stay locally present on your file system and only the configuration will be synced across all of your devices. So only the folders and what's inside of the folders, but only passing in IDs of the conversations, which is going to be just an encrypted version of the sender's email addresses. And so that's pretty much all that I have for you today. But if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.